So today I'm going to be ranking my 10 worst Formula One liveries in the last decade. Yes, we've got another strongly opinion-based video. A lot of you are going to disagree with me. We've all got opinions like bumholes. We all have them. And here's mine. I went through the last 10 years of Formula One cars and picked out the liveries. And again, I've tried to distinguish because car design has changed a lot over that time. And some of the car design is gopping visually. I've tried to distinguish that from the livery itself and try and focus on the livery, but as you'll see at times, it kind of does slip in there. Oh, and quickly as well, if you do like this video, please remember to drop a like on it. I'd really, really appreciate that and subscribe if you're new and you want to see more content just like this. So starting with number 10, the car that I find the least repugnant, repulsive, whatever you want to call it, on this list, I'm going with the 2012 Ferrari. And I've put this on here mainly just because it's the laziest Ferrari. In terms of it just being a red car with no additional design elements to it, it is just a red car with a couple of little, a little bit of white on the wings. I think it's a shame that, that Ferrari aren't a bit more experimental and a bit more playful. In number nine, we've got the 2011 Mercedes. Now, the Patronus implementation into the more modern cars I think it's been really nice I like the use of the turquoise teal Patronus color whatever you want to call it but in this it's just a blob on the side and the gray is far too light and far too flat for me the paint finish makes it look like a little toy car I don't know it just doesn't scream quality to me I, I like the Mercedes designs and this for me is the worst of the bunch and number eight we've got the 2013 Marussia now Black and red as a, as a base should work, right? And the problem that Marussia have had, or had when they existed back in the day, is that they didn't have many sponsors. I don't understand why the cars that have minimal sponsor logos aren't more creative, because they've got all this room to play with. Marussia has had the, uh, quite a nice little icon, you know, it was good. And I don't feel they really took anything from that either. It just felt like a default livery you get in, like, I don't know, Burnout Paradise or something like. The potential was there and it just wasn't realised for me and it's frustrating. And talking of painfully uninspiring and just default paint job, 2016 Manor, prime example again. You've got the blue, the red and the white. They could have done a lot with that. And again, minimal sponsors. Okay, fair enough. Be a bit more creative with the paint job. I know that car was only ever going to sit at the back of the grid, but Jesus Christ, man, it's Formula One. Like... Put a bit of effort in. At number six, we have the 2017 McLaren. Now, this one, like I said at the start, I'm trying not to be too influenced by the actual vehicle aesthetic design, the physical of it, but the fin, man. The, this fin era was so dead. The McLaren draws so much attention with the sw swoop up of the orange at the back. It just makes this fin look even bigger than it does anyway, and it already looks huge. For me, really clumsily, uh, draws attention to the worst part of the car. The Ferrari, the 27 Ferrari was a good example of how I think they should have done it where they actually have the the red come down as if it is a normal car without the stupid fin on the back and then the white for the fin. I dig the orange, um, the actual color combo I don't dislike really. It, and I like that in terms of the amount, it's, it's, it's the fin man. I can't look past the fin. And number five, we have the 2015 Sauber. It's just a blue car. And it's a nice blue and it's a nice yellow, the blob on the side. But again, there doesn't seem to be a design there. It's just a blue car, a blob on the side. And then when the actual season started, they put a little bit of yellow on the, on the nose. Do more to create a car that's interesting and compelling that people will actually look at so that sponsors get more value from the proposition, right? They spend all this time making this wonderful car and then they just give it a generic as paint job not to mention the white on the front and rear wings like what's make make them yellow why, why don't you make them yellow why why I, I don't get it okay number four we have the 2013 williams it's that straight line down the side first and foremost that just bothers me from front to back there's this brrr, you know reminiscent of the aero patterns going around these cool liveries like the Again, the Patronus on the Mercedes, like how it curves. Brr, straight line. No. And there's too much navy. Uh, it's just, I, I think navy's a dead colour for a Formula One car. It's a little bit of white, a little bit of the red. I think they should have put more white. Maybe a 50-50 balance, I think, would have looked a bit better. 
So top three, we're getting close to the end and I'm putting the 2014 Lotus as the third worst livery of the last decade. I mean, again, it's hard to look past the revolting nose on that car. It's just a mess, the livery, man. There's the black and the gold and the red. It's, it's almost the opposite issue to what the Manor um, car had. There's too much going on. There's too many logos. There's too many swishes. And, like, it's just, it's just a show. And to me, it just does not work. There's too much red. I think they should have, if they're going to use the red, use it a little bit more selectively. And it's just, again, it's just too much. It's just an overload on me and I, I don't like it. And the nose just looks like someone spreading their legs, which is not what you want to see on an F1 weekend, really, is it? Okay, number two, the second worst livery of the decade. I'm going for the 2019 Williams. Yeah, it's just bad, isn't it? Spray paint blue I, I feel like they had that paint job and kept it so generic and they were like all right then we can just stick any old sponsors so then rocket and rexona and also it i don't know if it was again we know the car design was awful but that car looked massive it didn't look like a, a tight agile little car it just looked huge i don't know if it was the livery that just made it look like a massive barge maybe that helped for all the giga kibitza memes Maybe that's where that came from, really, because the car looks bloody massive. And then, number one, the worst livery of the last 10 years in Formula One is the 2019 Alpha... T I'm joking. I got ya. I got ya. I got ya. No, it's not the Alpha... T as much as it's not my least favourite this year, it's not the worst of the decade. Don't hate me. No, I'm going with the 2012 Salva. Now, look, they've clearly, you know, put a bit of effort or a little bit of thought process. Like, oh, okay, let's have a colour block at the... Like, colour blocks work great on sneakers, on trainers. I do that a lot on my sneaker screen stuff, and it works really well. And they had the grey at the front and the, and the back and the white in the middle. But on the car, it just doesn't work. You've got these almost vertical lines cutting through what is meant to be this curvaceous, like... No, it, that doesn't work. With a lot of weekends, there was big white spaces on the car, and to me, the just balance is just completely off. Of course, there's a cherry on top. The thing that makes this livery probably worse than the Williams for me is the fact that it's sponsored by Chelsea. Why is a football team on an F1 car? I get that football teams are businesses, but... No, I can't stand Chelsea and it has no place in Formula One or on a Formula One car. No, no team has. If Mercedes, ro it wouldn't be Mercedes, would it? Let's be honest, it would be Williams rocked up with West Ham on the side of it. Probably because we're a banter club who apparently are, you know, best mates with Williams story. Don't. West Ham on the Haas. Imagine that. Like, no, no, like, no. Football teams should be nowhere near Formula One teams. And the fact that it's Chelsea who are one of my least favourite football clubs. Uh, yeah, just now in the coffin for me. So that's my top 10. I think overall, looking at all the liveries over the last 10 years, I think the Sauber ones have been the worst, partly because it's just a lack of consistency. They've all had all different colours and different kind of title sponsors and it, it's looked messy. I think the more recent cars are better for sure, but uh, yeah, as an overall, that's probably my least favourite. So there we have it. Be sure to let me know your 10 worst down in the comments below or just put these in order from best to worst or just tell me I'm an idiot and I'm wrong and I've got no taste. Whatever, I don't care. I will read every single comment. I will respond to every single comment just like I always do. So be as nice or as mean to me as you please. Thank you as ever for watching, taking the time to watch my stuff. If you've made it this far, actually, I've got a question for you. Is the image quality better, worse, or the same on this for this bit capturing me than in my previous videos? Have you, do you, can you notice a difference, better or worse? Let me know, I'll put a poll above. I'm interested to see what you guys and girls can see as well as of me and my face. Please drop a like on this video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're new and you wanna see more stuff just like this. I hope we're all enjoying sitting at home around all day. I'm gonna do my best to, again, bring as much content as I can, when I can, within the parameters of my life. My name's been Tomo, this is the Tomo F1 YouTube channel. Thanks again, have a good one. Ta-da. <laughs>